rolling out of 5G might negatively impact our ability to forecast the weather and accurately predict storms. In the spring of 2019, NASA and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, said 5G antennas using similar frequencies used by satellites to gather critical water vapor data could compromise forecasts and science. The FCC and big telecom companies are seeking to expand cellular service into frequency bands such as the one at 24 GHz, which falls near the frequency used for forecasting at about 23.8 GHz. The FCC, which licenses the wireless spectrum for 5G in the U.S., says the fears are exaggerated. In March 2019, Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross, who oversees NOAA and NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, sent a letter asking the FCC to postpone the auction of the 5G frequency bands. Instead, the FCC went ahead with the auction, selling frequency to both T-Mobile and AT&T. In May 2019, Neil Jacob, acting administrator of NOAA, testified to Congress that an internal study had found 5G-related interference could cost NOAA 77% of the water vapor data it collects at 23.8 GHz and could degrade weather forecasts by up to 30% essentially sending us back to 1980 levels. 5G uses the frequency of 24 gigahertz. Gigahertz is a unit of measurement along this larger electromagnetic spectrum. You know all about this. You're familiar with this. AM radio waves, FM radio waves. There's cell phones and Wi-Fi. You get into the higher wavelengths. You get into things like TV remotes, visible light, medical x-rays, so on and so forth. So you're probably saying at this point, but what does that have to do with the weather, right? We've got these satellites up in orbit around the Earth, and those satellites pick up on different frequencies. Satellites, though, see atmospheric water vapor at 23.8 gigahertz. So, if you've got that 5G signal emitting out a signal at 24 gigahertz, then our water vapor is at 23.8 gigahertz. That's really close to each other on that larger spectrum. So, if the satellites are looking down to Earth, they're going to get confused. Is it the 5G signal? Is it water vapor? Ultimately, we're not going to be able to determine that. And that data that's used for forecast models is taken right from those satellites. If we can't use that data, those forecasts are going to get worse. Due to their concerns, NASA and NOAA were seeking a sizable buffer zone between the frequency bands used for weather and those used for 5G. This buffer is measured in units of decibel watts. Unfortunately, in late November 2019, at a meeting of the International Telecommunication Union, international regulators agreed to a buffer of 33 decibel watts until September 1, 2027, and a 39 decibel watt limit after that. The goal was to allow 5G companies to start building networks now and to add more protection for weather forecasting once the companies have established their networks. The U.S. has been slow to get into the game, but the president said the FCC would work to make it easier for companies to do so. That includes freeing up high-frequency airwaves or spectrum to carry 5G. And the FCC plans to spend $20 billion over 10 years on expanding 5G broadband for rural communities. Eric Alex, a meteorologist and head of World Meteorological Organization, called the idea of having eight years of lax regulation of grave concern to weather forecasters. Once again, regulators chose policies that benefit big wireless and fail to protect the planet and the people. The 5G expansion not only poses a threat to human health, privacy, and weather forecasting, but an increasing amount of research indicates that surrounding ourselves with an unprecedented amount of digital devices is creating a new form of pollution known as a digital or electro smog. In the report Bees, Birds, and Mankind, German researchers discuss the effects of this electric smog. Quote, the consequences of this development have also been predicted by the critics for many decades and can now no longer be ignored. Bees and other insects disappear, birds avoid certain areas, and are disoriented in other locations. In September 2008, Dr. Ulrich Warnk, one of the authors of that report, also presented his findings to the Radiation Research Trust at the Royal Society in London. He stated that, quote, an unprecedented dense mesh of artificial, magnetic, electrical, and electromagnetic fields are disrupting nature on a massive scale, causing birds and bees to lose their bearings, fail to reproduce, and die. A review of studies from around the world shows that concerns around the electrosmog are rising. One study reviewed the impact of radio frequency radiation from wireless telecommunications on wildlife. The researchers note that phone towers located in the living areas of some species are continuously irradiating wildlife, 
causing a reduction of their natural defenses, deterioration of their health, and problems in reproduction. The researchers conclude that, quote, microwave and radio frequency pollution constitutes a potential cause for the decline of animal populations and deteriorations of health of plants living near phone masts. To measure these effects, urgent specific studies are necessary. Studies are also beginning to look at the impacts of radio frequency radiation on trees. A 2016 study attempted to verify whether there is a connection between unusual tree damage and radio frequency exposure. The researchers conducted a long-term field monitoring study in two German cities. They observed and took photos of unusual or unexplainable tree damage, along with measurements of electromagnetic radiation. A statistical analysis showed that electromagnetic radiation from cell phone towers is harmful for trees. The researchers note that, quote, These results are consistent with the fact that damage afflicted on trees by mobile phone towers usually starts on one side, extending to the whole tree over time. A 2010 study looked at the decline in aspen trees in Colorado since 2004. This study suggested that the radio frequency exposure may have strong adverse effects on growth rate and may be an underlying factor in aspen decline. Additionally, there are concerns that thousands of trees will be cut down or trimmed to ensure the 5G frequencies operate efficiently. Another area of growing concern relates to the fear that the massive increase in exposure to radio frequency radiation could be one of the causes for bee colony collapse disorder, which has wreaked havoc on the global honeybee population. In a 2017 study, researcher Daniel Favre of Switzerland claims that his article describes an experiment on bees which clearly shows the adverse effects of electromagnetic fields on their behavior. Favre states that, quote, The experiment should be reproduced by other researchers so that the danger of man-made electromagnetism for bees, nature, and thus humans ultimately appears evident to anyone. In the study Mobile Phone Mast Effects on Common Frog Tadpoles, researchers exposed eggs and tadpoles to electromagnetic radiation from cell phone antennas for two months, from the egg phase until an advanced phase of tadpole, and found low coordination of movements, an inconsistent growth pattern, and a high mortality rate. The authors conclude, quote, These results indicate that radiation emitted by phone masks in a real situation may affect the development and may cause an increase in mortality of exposed tadpoles. This research may have huge implications for the natural world, which is now exposed to high microwave radiation levels from a multitude of phone masts. Ajit Pai is the chair of the FCC, and he joins me now. Welcome to the News Hour. Thank you for having me on. So I want to ask you about what one of your Democratic colleagues on the FCC had to say about our efforts to get into 5G. She said, so far we've done more harm than good. She cites the president's tariffs on 5G equipment, uh, says the White House has been alienating security allies. We need to expand that network. How do those things hamper your ability to build and grow the network? I respectfully disagree. If you look at some of the independent observers, they believe that the United States is in the lead when it comes to 5G. For example, Cisco recently put out a report suggesting that North America, led of course by the United States, would have twice as many 5G connections as Asia by 2022. That same month, ABI Research said flatly that the United States is in the lead in 5G. Over last week, CTIA pointed out that the United States will have 92 deployments of 5G in the United States by the end of 2019, which is almost twice as many as any country in the world. And just on Tuesday, a report came out that was reported in Bloomberg, pointing out that 5G-related job listings in the United States have increased 12% just over the last three weeks. So these are objective indicia of the fact that we are in the lead in 5G, but we want to maintain that lead, and that's part of the reason why I was at the White House today to announce two new initiatives. Well, deployment is one thing, but consumer... But to those willing to do the homework, it becomes clear. There is ample evidence of negative impacts as a result of radio frequency radiation associated with cell phones, Wi-Fi, and likely 5G. In fact, in 2018, the European Commission's Scientific Committee on Health, Environmental, and Emerging Risks released a statement on emerging health and environmental issues, which clearly outlined the need for more independent research. Under Section 4.4, Potential Effects on Wildlife of Increases in Electromagnetic Radiation, the report states, quote, How exposure to electromagnetic fields could affect humans remains a controversial area, and studies have not yet yielded clear evidence of the impact on mammals, birds, or insects. The lack of clear evidence to inform the development of exposure guidelines to 5G technology leaves open the possibility of unintended biological consequences. These unintended consequences have the potential to affect human life as well as insects, birds, plants, and trees. 
To watch the full film, The 5G Trojan Horse, or download or purchase your copy, visit theconsciousresistance.com slash Trojan Horse.